Good morning and welcome. I'm Luke Hollander, one of the pastors here at Mount Olive. And on behalf of our entire community, welcome to worship with us today. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent, which means Christmas is just around the corner. On Christmas Eve, we'll be hosting two parking lot lesson and carol worship services. So if you're interested in participating with us that way, we invite you to come to go to molive.org to register for a spot or to call in at the church office and register for a spot that way. Additionally, this Sunday or today, if you're watching, our Christmas program will be posted on YouTube. We've got some wonderful selections from our kids, including a virtual choir and a creative telling of the Christmas story. So I hope you'll stay tuned and, and participate in that with us. With that, I invite you to light your Advent wreath or a candle, gather communion elements, and prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we begin with the prelude. I dream of music that makes my heart swell. I dream of trees that take my breath away. I dream of sunrises that wrap me in light. I dream of family dinners that feel like home. I dream of church services that give me hope. I dream of love as the default. So today, as we draw near to Christmas Day, we light the candle of love. May this light burn bright as a reminder that God is here and God is love. We are not alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. loving connections that no one would feel alone. We pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, 
Christ have mercy Lord have mercy on us For those of us struggling right now that no one would think that they are alone That your people would be kind, reaching out, embodying the compassion of Christ for ourselves, for our neighbor, for the world. We pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Stir, Stir up, up your, your power, power, Lord Christ, Christ and, come. and come. With your, your abundant, abundant grace and might, and might free us from, from the sin that, that would obstruct your mercy, mercy that, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. world. For, For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, God now, now and forever. forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Luke. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy. The promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, 
Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Over the last year, we have had to come to grips with the fact that so many things we love to do are just not possible right now. We long for the day when things will change. Yet there are some things that will always be impossible. In our household, the youngest of us often dreams of a time when she can enter into the TV and play with her favorite characters. And the eldest among us is trying to figure out how she can teleport to Canada to visit her family over Christmas. Yes, some things are impossible. But sometimes the seemingly impossible actually happens. Have you spent much time thinking about bumblebees? Their bodies are so enormous and their wings are so tiny, especially compared to the other insects. In the 1930s, physicists and entomologists agreed it's impossible for bumblebees to fly. Their wings seem too small to produce enough force to lift their huge bodies. But fly they do. Today we hear about another story of the impossible. We hear that an angel showed up in an unfamiliar place and announce the unimaginable to an unlikely individual. We hear that God asked a teenager to consider changing the world by giving birth to God's child. So how do you interpret this story? Do you hear this as a factual story of Jesus' birth foretold? Or do you find yourself questioning the details? Maybe the appearance of the angel and the pregnancy that defies everything you learned in health class are just too much for you to accept as true. Or perhaps you don't worry too much about it. You simply suspend disbelief and enjoy the nostalgia of the story that you hear at this time each year. However you hear the story today, there's one thing I know to be true. This is a story for us. When you believe the fact, whether you believe the facts or not, this story helps us wonder together about who God is and what our relationship with God might look like. And it prepares us for Christmas when we will come face to face with God who is always coming near to us, always finding ways to break into our lives and transform us. And if this is not, and if this is about drawing us into an understanding of who God is and how God works in our lives, does it really matter in the end, the specific details of the story? Does it really matter if each thing actually happened? In fact, it might just be in wrestling with the story that we find the greatest gift. A chance to imagine the impossible possibility of God among us in the most unlikely ways. 
So let's wrestle with this story and the mystery of God, just like Mary did. Notice that when the angel first appeared to Mary, she didn't respond immediately with, here I am. I'm ready to do as you have asked. Rather, she went through a period of confusion, disbelief, and hesitance. Who? Me? What is happening? Why am I favored? What do you mean God is with me? Rather than entirely dismissing or accepting the appearance of the angel without hesitation, this is our chance to be confused, bewildered, and even a little curious with Mary. She's confronted with God's impossible possibility, and she neither shuts it down nor blindly accepts it. Do you know any 14-year-olds? Imagine their reaction to this. Would they sit stunned for a while, or do you think they'd launch into a series of questions? And what might you do if you suddenly heard that you were favored by God and that you were being asked to do something you never thought possible? The angel Gabriel continues by inviting Mary into the work of God. This is the part where God says, here's what I'm dreaming. I want you, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me. This is what God says. Here's what I'm dreaming. I want to be among my people. I want to extend the kingdom to earth. And I want you to give birth to the child who's going to carry out this plan of mine. Mary, what do you think? This is where we get to see God at work. Not in a power over sort of way, but invitationally. If we skip over this part, we might miss that Mary has great agency in the decision to bear the Christ child. That Mary was an active, consenting participant in this divine miracle. And if we miss Mary's agency, is it possible that we might miss our own? If we blindly accept things as they are, even when they're broken, we can miss when God is calling us to take action and make change. Now, Mary still has many questions. How can this be, God? There's no possible way I could be pregnant. And how could I have a child that will do all of these things that you are saying? Then Gabriel continues by sharing the rest of God's plan. Don't worry. I will be with you through the Holy Spirit. And we will be partners in this miracle, and you will give birth to a holy child who will be called the Son of God. I've already demonstrated that I can accomplish the impossible through your relative, Elizabeth. She's expecting a child, even though she was too old to have kids. And since we're talking about the impossible, here is perhaps the most unbelievable part of this story. The will of God was left in the hands of a teenager. And Mary said yes. She was open to be tr being transformed by the work of God. She questioned, wrestled, listened, and ultimately when God asked, what do you think of all this? Are you in? Mary accepted God's invitation. I read this story last week with the confirmation students, and many of them were struck by the phrase, for nothing will be impossible with God. We didn't unpack exactly what we thought this meant, but I don't think any of them imagined about, I don't think any of them imagined that it was about how God might help us enter into a TV and play with our favorite characters, or even fly like a bumblebee. Rather, there was an unspoken hope that with God, there's a possibility for something better, even when we're faced with the impossible. Right now, you might find yourself bewildered, facing what seems like the impossible at every corner. 
you might be asking, how can this be, God? How can the world, how can my world even look like this right now? You are desiring a better world. A world where the virus isn't in complete control. A world where we can be in community safely. Where we can play together, laugh together, and share God's love together. And so you are ready to see God draw near. You are ready for Christmas. Longing for a promise that with God, nothing is impossible. So I invite you to be open to Mary's story. Whether fact or fiction, it might help you enter into God's mystery and possibility. Be open that be open to the idea that just like Mary, God favors you. God made you, chose you and wants you to imagine full imagine a world of impossible possibility. Take this time to pause and listen. See if you can get a glimpse of God's transformative plan and dream of the impossible. Mary was open to being transformed from a peasant girl to a prophet. From a teenage girl to the mother of God. And from denial to discipleship. How are your hearts and minds open to the boundless, transforming work of God? For with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. affirm our faith. We believe believe that that this this world world is hard, harder than than it has has to be. be. When When the the world world falls falls apart around us, we we believe in listening for the angels that say, do not not be afraid. afraid. And And in seeking out the Elizabeths in our lives, 
those who laugh with joy at our arrival and throw open the doors to their homes. We believe that healthy relationships can offer healing through the laughter of cousins, the joy shared between siblings, and the home found in partnership. Therefore, we believe in church families, in chosen families, and in the love that extends beyond family. We believe in friendships, in neighbors, and in leaning on each other when the going gets tough. We believe in the triune God, lover, beloved, and love itself, inherently relational, always connected, and never alone. We believe that the same belovedness exists for us. We believe that we are loved and claimed, never alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear us as we pray for everyone in need, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your mercy is great. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faith. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. We pray that the Spirit of God would inspire our companions in ministry in Kajota, Tanzania, and Bogota, Colombia. May God work mightily in them to announce God's grace to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to cre create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Give strength to essential employees working in difficult situations. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence, especially Mount Olive members and friends who are ill, grieving, or recovering from surgery. Be with all who have been affected by COVID-19, including the sick, homebound, or grieving, those who have lost jobs or been financially impacted, and teachers and students. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and, and also with you. with you. Please share a sign of peace with someone today or in the week to come. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose mercy endures from generation to generation, in your love and care, nourish and strengthen us through this meal, that through the body and blood of your Son, we may all know the hope of your promised coming in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, 
gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Come, Lord Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Come, Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come. come. Your Your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save Save us from the time of trial, and and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. So at this time, I invite you, if you are worshiping today with others, please turn to them and extend to them the bread or the crackers, saying, this is the body of Christ given for you. And also the wine or juice, saying to them, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And for those of you who are worshiping with us virtually today, please take the bread or the cracker. It is the body of Christ given for you. And take the wine or the juice. It is the blood of Christ shed for you. Luke, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Travis, the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Glenn, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever, and your boundless mercies strengthen us in our, and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh. 
in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.